Hey guys! Welcome back to Storytime. Today we are reading an absolute gem of a story called Amazing Grace. Amazing Grace is written by Mary Hoffman and illustrated by Carolyn Binch. This is part of a series all about Amazing Grace and you can go ahead and look up some of the other titles in this series which I think you would love. But today we're going to jump right in and meet Grace for the first time. Amazing Grace. Notice all these costumes that Grace is wearing? Specifically this one. Hmm. She looks like Peter Pan. Grace was a girl who loved stories. She didn't mind if they were read to her, or told to her, or made up in her own head. She didn't care if they were from books or movies or out of Nana's long memory. Grace just loved stories. And after she had heard them, and sometimes while they were still going on, Grace would act them out. And she always gave herself the most exciting part. There's Grace and her Nana. Do you like acting out stories? Super fun. Grace went into battle as Joan of Arc and wove a wicked web as Anansi the spider. She hid inside the wooden horse at the gates of Troy. She went exploring for lost kingdoms. She sailed the seven seas with a peg leg and a parrot. Do you like to play dress up too? Oh yeah, it's so fun. She was Aladdin, rubbing his magic lamp to make the genie appear. And Mowgli in the backyard jungle. Most of all, Grace loved to act out adventure stories and fairy tales. When there was no one else around, Grace played all the parts herself. She set out to seek her fortune with no companion but her trusty cat and found a city with streets paved in gold. Sounds like Grace has a lot of creativity. I love how she uses her imagination. Sometimes she could get Ma and Nana to join in when they weren't too busy. Then she was Dr. Grace and their lives were in her hands. She's got them all bandaged up like a doctor taking care of her patients. It's fun when we let others come into our imagination too and we play dress up and pretend with them as well. One day, Grace's teacher said they would do the play Peter Pan. Grace knew who she wanted to be. When she raised her hand, Raj said, you can't be Peter, that's a boy's name. But Grace kept her hand up. You can't be Peter Pan, whispered Natalie. He isn't black. But Grace kept her hand up. All right, said the teacher. Lots of you want to be Peter Pan, so we'll have to have auditions next week to choose parts. She gave them words to learn.
When Grace got home, she seemed sad. What's the matter? asked Ma. Raj said I couldn't be Peter Pan because I'm a girl. That just shows what Raj knows, said Ma. A girl can be Peter Pan if she wants to. Grace cheered up. Then she, later she remembered something else. Natalie says I can't be Peter Pan because I'm black, she said. Ma looked angry. But before she could speak, Nana said, It seems Natalie is another one who doesn't know anything. You can be anything you want, Grace, if you put your mind to it. On Saturday, Nana told Grace they were going out. In the afternoon, they caught a bus and train into town. Nana took Grace to a grand theater. The sign outside read, Rosalie Wilkins in Romeo and Juliet, in sparkling lights. Are we going to the ballet, Nana? Asked Grace. We are, honey. But first, I want you to look at this picture. Grace looked up and saw a beautiful young ballerina in a tutu. Above the dancer, it said, Stunning, New Juliet. Have you ever been in a play or a ballet? Or some kind of theater? It's a wonderful thing. That one is little Rosalie from back home in Trinidad, said Nana. Her granny and me, we grew up together on the island. She's always asking me, do I want tickets to see her Rosalie dance? So this time I said yes. After the ballet, Grace played the part of Juliet, dancing around her room in her imaginary tutu. I can be anything I want, she thought. On Monday, the class met for auditions to choose who was best for each part. When it was Grace's turn to be Peter, she knew exactly what to do and all the words to say. She had been Peter Pan all weekend. She took a deep breath and imagined herself flying. When it was time to vote, the class chose Raj to be Captain Hook and Natalie to be Wendy. There was no doubt who would be Peter Pan. Everyone voted for Grace. You were fantastic, whispered Natalie. The play was a big success and Grace was an amazing Peter Pan. After it was all over, she said, I feel as if I could fly all the way home. You probably could, said Ma. Yes, said Nana. If Grace puts her mind to it, she can do anything she wants. The end. Did you enjoy that? I sure did. Thanks for joining me for this reading of Amazing Grace. This book is so special, and I'm going to show you one of the reasons why. If you flip on over to these back pages with me, you'll see that Mary Hoffman shares her writing process. Now, Mary Hoffman is the author of this story as well as the other stories in the Amazing Grace series. And she lets us peek into her imagination and hear about when she got the idea to write about Amazing Grace. And we even get to see her original writings. So if you've ever written a story you know what it's like. You get to scribble out all your thoughts and ideas as they come together and eventually turns into a beautiful story full of imagination, an original story that in this case was created by Mary Hoffman, but in your case could be authored by you. And here are some of the original drawings for Amazing Grace by Carolyn Binge, the illustrator. 
So this is another reason why Amazing Grace is such an imaginative book. I want to ask you, well, when was the last time you used your imagination? What do you like to imagine? Mm-hmm. That sounds exciting. It's really fun to be creative. We all have creativity. And it is such a gift to be able to use our creativity, whether it's writing a story or singing a song that we've made up, doing a dance, painting a picture. Why don't we all take the time today to do something creative, just like Grace? Think you can do that? Awesome. The last thing I want to mention is it was such a beautiful story about how Grace learned how to be herself, no matter what anyone else said. Can you relate to that? Mm -hmm. Was there ever a time in your life where, where you felt shy? Or like you couldn't do something that was really in your heart? Yeah, I can relate to that, most certainly. Well, what happened in the story? when Grace was feeling that way. Mm -hmm. Her ma and her nana sure encouraged her. What does it mean to encourage somebody? Well, the simplest definition is to put courage inside of that person. So how did Nana encourage Grace? Yeah, she took her to the ballet to see Juliet. And what was so special about that? The ballerina looked just like Grace. Isn't it a beautiful thing when you see somebody else stepping out and being brave? It puts hope in your own heart and encouragement in your own heart that you can celebrate that person and that you can be brave too. These are just a few of the beautiful lessons that I'm so glad we got to learn together today, and I look forward to sharing with you more stories next time. So go out there and be creative and be yourself, and I'll see you next time. Adios!